Hello guys, I hope you all are doing great. In today's video, we'll learn basics of the graph editor using an example of a bouncing ball animation. So I've started a new blender file. Add in a sphere and a plane for a floor. Let's animate the sphere so it falls like a ball and hits the floor and stays still. I'll scale the plane up so it becomes like a floor and I'll move my sphere up in the z-axis so it's going to fall down and hit the floor. Now I can press the record button and I'll just lift the timeline up a little bit so you can see the keyframes. Press G to grab and press enter just so it enters a keyframe because I have the record button active. I'll go across 25 frames but do remember if I go to my output properties that the frame rate by default is 24 so I'll just change that to 25. It doesn't make too much difference but now I consider 25 frames. Now it's a little bit tricky from this view here. So I'll go to front view, zoom in a bit, G to grab, and there's that at Z axis. And you'll notice that I moved it twice. But because I was over the keyframe, the second time I moved it where I was adjusting the position slightly, it overwrite the original ones. So now we've still got two keyframes here. So I changed my end frame to 25 just for the moment. Zoom out of touch and press play. Let's go across to the animation workspace. Now that gives us our camera view and the dope sheet as well. But for this animation, we are going to use the graph editor. So I'll go to my window options here and change it to the graph editor. And you can see this animation column here. And I'll bring this up slightly and let's zoom in on my object so I can see it a little bit more clearly. And I'll zoom out of my graph editor using the wheel of my mouse. Now, the graph editor shares some similarities to the dope sheet, and we've got the object transformed here, or the channels. Now, it gives them a particular color. We are actually only moving in the Z location, so I can select this one, and shift select all the way down to the scale, right click, and delete channels, that will make it a little bit easier to understand. So I've got three channels for location. Now it's not moving in the X and Y, but I'll leave those in there just to show you some elements of the graph editor. You see each location has different colors allocated to them. So the Z here has a blue, and it's actually this one here. It goes from this height here down to this height here, and it's focusing on the object origin of the object. That's why it's not all the way down to zero here. The object origin is actually above the floor, hence the line is above the floor. Here the X and Y are at zero at the moment, so if I hide those, you can see those keyframes deleting. I can highlight a channel, so if I click on the X, you can see it in purple there. It's actually red, but it's over the top of the blue line of zero, so it's got a purpley color to it. So it's a mixture of the blue, which is the zero line, and the red. Therefore purple. If I highlight the Y location, you can see a mixture of blue and green, which gives us a slightly turquoise color. And the Z is this one here, highlighted. I can actually change the height of this holding down control. Pressing the wheel of my mouse and moving it upwards will change the height. If I hold down control and use the wheel of my mouse and move across, it changes the width, so I'll make it a bit thinner here because we're going to add some frames to the end and bring this to the beginning. As I've explained the X and Y, I'll select both those and delete them, so I'm just left with my Z location, which we can see here. I've got 25 frames that are at the moment. I'll bring it a little bit further this way. Let's go to 100 frames, so it's going to fall, and then it needs to come back up and down and up and down and up and down. So it hits the ground at frame 25 and it's going to bounce back up. Not quite another 25 frames because we're going to have it decay in terms of its bounce. And I know one second is a long time for a ball to drop, but we'll sort that out in a moment. So I'll go an extra 20 frames and I can duplicate this keyframe here. So shift D to duplicate and move it out to here. And remember, you can constrain it to the X axis by pressing X. So it's exactly the same height as the starting keyframe. So I left click there to set it, and I can press G to grab in the Y to move it down. Now that is slightly confusing, 
because it's the y-axis in this 2D graph here, but obviously our object is moving in the z-axis, so up and down in 2D windows like this is always going to be the y-axis, and I can duplicate this one, press shift D and then X to keep this in exactly the same position a bit shorter again, and I want 65 now, which is fine because it's going to go up and down at the same speed. Then I'll select this one here, shift D to duplicate in the x-axis, bring it along, and this time it's going to be shorter and not bounce as high. So if I go to 80, that's 15 frames, and then press G, then Y to bring that down so it doesn't bounce quite as high, and I'll bring that down a bit further. So it starts to die off, and I'm around two and one half up. It doesn't matter if you've got different heights. Then I'll duplicate this one shift D in the X, move it across, and again, another 15 frames, and let's just see what that looks like. It doesn't look much like a ball bouncing at the moment, when I drag across my timeline as it comes to the first point, the falling slows down. And you can see that in the graph here, its speed of falling increases, and this is constant here. But then its speed of falling here slows down, and we get an effect. If I bring the timeline back to here, and press play, where it doesn't seem to be hitting the ground, so it slows down, and almost hovers. One way of fixing that is changing the interpolation if I click on this keyframe here, I can actually change the way this is interpolated and change these curves. So they're a bit sharper, and therefore we get a bounce. Press a T. The interpolation is the most important for us as beginners. There's constant, which I'll show you looks like this. So that's an on-off, and in fact I'll select all my keyframes with A and then press T, and then press constant. So it's on the floor, up on the floor, up certainly doesn't look like bouncing. So I press a T again, and incidentally, you can find this menu under key, and then interpolation mode. Then we've got linear, which if I play, that takes away any curves. So that's good for the bottom of our bounce, but not for the top, as it looks like it's hitting a ceiling. Then lastly, if I press T again, we have the busier. Now the busier create these curves, and if I select this one here, and scale in the X to bring it right in like this, we get a bounce as it slows down and comes back down again. So we need to make this one sharp, like this one. I can press a T and change it to linear, which is fine, but it's a little bit awkward, and I have to move this a handle here, and it has that because it's linked to another one that is a busier handle. It's actually just a bit easier to select it and scale it right in, and I'll do the same for this one. So I'll press play at the start, and we've got a ball bouncing very slowly at the moment. Now it's far too slow. This bounce, it looks like there's not much gravity. What I can do is select all my points and scale in the X to shorten this. But obviously I'm scaling into this sort of middle point of all our keyframes, so I'll undo that. And if I move my playhead to the front, incidentally, I do want to move this keyframe to frame zero. So press G then X with that across one, and the frames start to zero. I'm not sure why that's not default, to be honest. And I can select all my keyframes. And I can use this button here, the pivot point, and change it to 2D cursor, much like the transform pivot up here has 3D cursor. If I now scale from here in the x-axis, it will scale according to where my playhead is. So I'll bring it to 50 frames. So let's see what that looks like by pressing play. That's not too bad. It seems to be falling at the right rate. But these top keyframes are a little bit sharp still, and it doesn't stay at the top of the bounce long enough. So if I select them all, change my pivot point to individual centers, and then press scale in the X, I can make this much wider. And now play it, and it looks like a bouncing ball. Although I do need a little bit more bounces along here. To do it, just duplicate these keyframes and bring them down here. I could move the ball in the viewport as well. It's entirely up to you. I'd like to be able to see the gradual decline of the height, so I'd rather duplicate a keyframe from here and move it across to here. And this one as well needs to become a little bit shorter, actually. So, probably around here, and G then... X to make that across. I can zoom in a bit to make sure we can see that nice and easily. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, 
I need to scale this in so there's a bit more of a curve. Last one. So shift D, I'll move it down here. And you could do even a final one at a very short height here. And I'm just going to select all the bottom ones because really they're not quite sharp enough so I can scale them all down. Just make sure I've got the individual centers on scale them all in the X so they're very, very sharp like this. Zoom out of touch. And let's play our animation. And that looks great. I will stop it at frame 80. Now, if I was rendering with still frames, I'd actually stop it at frame 72 and just repeat the last frame. But if it's a video file, I want a little bit of stillness before I restart my animation so it's bouncing like this. And then there's just a bit of stillness before it restarts the animation like this. Of course, you might like to render your animation. Just make sure you've moved your camera into the right position and that you set up the output correctly and change the file format to FFmpeg. If you want a video file, also remember to save your work before you start rendering. That was all in today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, share among the beginner friends, See you in the next one. Till then, keep creating.